Good day, YouTubers. Welcome back to another video of the Electrical Guide. Today, I want to show you how to install a bathroom fan timer so you never have to come back and turn off the fan again. So before we get started, let's go shut off the power. Okay, now that the power's off, we can loosen and remove the switch that we want to replace. I've already loosened these screws in the interest of time. I'm just gonna try and pull this out. Oof, not getting much play here. You can see that there's two black wires attached. Looks like there's actually three. So I'm gonna to have to loosen all these in order to really get this off. But first, I'm just gonna verify everything is indeed dead and there is no power in this box. And if there was, my tester here would be flashing red and beeping. So it's looking like we're good. So let's go ahead and take this device off. So I have here a green Robertson. I'm gonna loosen all these screws and I'm paying attention to where these wires are terminated because I may need to reference that again. Okay, screws are loose. Now it looks like we have one that's just stuck in the top here. I hate when they're stuck in the top. I can't pull it out. Looks like we're gonna have to cut it out. Now I have a lot of excess wire on this, so I'm just gonna cut this right out. Okay, so that was on the top, that black wire there. And it looks like we've got one on the bottom. I think it's just one wrapped around the screw. So I just have to bust that off there. And unfortunately, this very short wire here is indeed just one, which is extremely short and has just been looped. Now this is probably one of the worst case scenarios you can find, is having wire that's really, really short. So we're actually gonna be able to salvage this. And I think that this wire here is actually attached to this switch as well. And if it is, I can pull this off and we can just replace some of the wire that's here. So I'm just gonna pull this off the wall and I'll speed this process up. Okay, we've got this loose now. And I'm looking down and it looks like this is actually jumping to the next switch as well. So clearly that's the power feed here. So I'm gonna test one more time as we get deeper into this box that we're still dead all the way in. And we are, which is good. Okay, now unfortunately I'm gonna to have to take this switch off as well in order to pull all of these out. So I will do that again with my green Robertson and fast forward that as well. Okay, this is loose, we're gonna pull this off. And now we can see that one wire comes in over here in the back corner, looped around our first switch, looped around our second switch, and terminates on our third switch. So clearly that's the feed feeding each one of these switches, and then the black wires on top are going to their respective locations, in this case fan, light, and shower light. So I'm gonna to have to go and find a piece of black wire to put into here, actually a few pieces in order to do this properly. So I'm gonna pause the video, go get some more material, and we'll resume in a few minutes. Okay, so I've taken this wire off now completely off of the bottom of all these switches, and we're just leaving it and I've kept the wires attached to the top that are going up to the respective lights, just so I know which ones they are. And I've cut up a bunch of pieces here of size 14 AWG black wire, and I've pre-stripped some of the ends in order to make some connections here, some extensions to this wire. And I've also cut a piece of ground because I noticed that there is a spare ground screw back here, and I know that our device does come with a green ground connection. It's a lot easier to make a connection on this stranded ground than it is to try and loop it on the back of one of those screws. So I just grabbed a piece of copper as well. 
So I'm gonna put this copper on the ground screw at the back and I'm gonna speed that up. If you wanna see how this is done, I will link a video in the description to this. So in order to do this, I'm just gonna swap over to a red Robertson for the size of screw in the back for the ground. this clockwise same way as the screw tightens for the best connection. Okay, now unfortunately our feed wire is very short. I can cut it, you know, just about here and I can salvage some of this exposed copper, but even that's gonna be really short. So I think in this particular case, instead of trying to attach one, two, and my new black wire on my timer switch, three wires to this little stub I think in this case, I'm actually gonna extend the stub first into something that I can work with and then attach everything else to this extension. I think it'll make for a better connection. We, it looks like we have lots of space in this box. So this is a good time to do something like this. So I'm gonna speed up this process. Essentially all I'm doing is cutting off this excess uh, wire and attaching this to this feed so we can have an extension. And if you wanna see this, I also have a link into making good Moret connections in the description below. Now you can see I'm adding a couple twists to this insulation before I even get to the copper, just to provide a bit of strain relief. And now I can twist the copper as well. Okay, and I'm gonna put a moret on that connection, a couple turns. And if we look at it from the other side, we shouldn't see any copper coming out of this. So now what we can do is we can get this guy tucked in the corner. And we've got a little bit more to work with now for attaching the rest. Okay, now in preparation for me adding my timer, I'm gonna prep these other two switches with the little pieces that I cut off to attach to our feed. So by doing that, I'm just gonna strip a little bit here, give them a curl with my strippers here. You know, it doesn't have to be too tight. We can always tweak it after it's on the device. Give this a curl as well, kind of like so. I'm gonna attach those to our devices here. And if they're nice hooks, they should just stay there. I'm gonna pull out my green Robertson and give those a tighten clockwise. Same way the hook is wrapped. There's one. Here's number two. Okay, nice and snug. Now both of those are attached. So now that everything's prepped, I'm just gonna come back to my timer switch here. Um, we have a bunch of wires on the back. We're not gonna need the yellow and red stripe. That's for three-way, so don't worry about that one. Of course, the green goes to our ground. The neutral goes to our neutral, which I'll do under here. And we have our black and red. Now the red goes to the load, in this case our fan, and the black will be another one of these other black wires attached to this feed. So in order to make nice connections, I'm actually gonna strip all of these just a little bit more so that I have a little bit more to work with when I'm wrapping around these solid conductors. So here's roughly the difference in strip length of one that came out of the box, this green one, and what I've done. So it's almost double, and then I'm just gonna give it a bit of a twist just to keep them nice and neat there. And I'm gonna do that for all of these. Okay, so I've prepped all my wires and I'm gonna do my ground connection first in good practice. I'm gonna give this a couple of twists with my finger. And I'm going to throw a red on that. 
I'll give it a few twists so our ground is nice and solid. Next, I'm going to attach my neutral, which is going to be a little tricky because we already have what is this? One, two, three, four wires under our neutral connection. Take that off. Don't have a ton of copper to work with. So I've stripped even a little bit more than I would usually on this because I really want this to make a good contact in here. So what I'm gonna do is wrap this around. And I wanna wrap it nice, like so. I'm gonna put that same moret back on, a little bit tighter than it was previously. And to do that, I'm going to use my pliers. What this also does is twist it a little bit and give our neutral stranded wire a little bit of strain relief. Okay, last we have our hot wires here. So we already know that red is supposed to go up to our load, which is now this one. I haven't stripped this yet, so I'll go ahead and do that. This is a 14, so I'm using size 14 of my strippers. Okay, so I can wrap this with my fingers. This is gonna be a little bit long. So I actually wanna trim this back a little bit. Almost half. Here your cut is nice. And I'm going to put a moret on that as well. Of course, we don't wanna see any copper at the bottom. Give it a couple wraps, couple twists, right? Strain relief. Now, comes down to our last connection. Then we're gonna push all these wires inside. I know it looks a little crazy right now, but as long as we go through the process, we remember which wires are which, we do the ground neutral first and the hots last. So now all we have left is this stranded wire and our one, two, three solid wires that we're gonna be feeding our switches with. So to do this nicely, I like to wrap one of my solid wires around one of my stranded wires in advance. Kind of like this. And what that does is when I wrap the rest of these copper wires around this, it tends to kind of sandwich in the stranded wire. So I'm going to line up the other two here so that the insulations are in the same place. Line them up. Grab my pliers. Grab just behind the copper. Give it a twist. Get it started, and then the copper bits after as well. And that's really pinching our stranded wire between the copper strands. Making a really good connection. Of course, I'm gonna cut off the excess here, quite a lot actually. And then should be able to put them right on that standard size. Make it snug, a couple twists, and we don't want to see any copper coming out the bottom of this at all. Okay, now everything has been attached, so we're going to have to wrangle these back in. So I'm going to tuck all of these in, and I'm going to speed this up because it might take me a minute. So when you're putting a switch that's a little bigger, a little bigger body than your last switch was, you may have to do a little trimming of the outside of your box. Usually this will just bust off like that, a couple pieces. Be careful not to damage, you know, you can see where your cover plate is. Make sure you don't damage anything outside that, what it's gonna cover. Now it should fit a little nicer. Okay, so all of these again are green Robertson. So I'm gonna start the biggest one first because I think it might give me a bit of trouble. I'm just going to start the screws. Okay, so it started, it's still loose. And I'm going to do the next one here. Now 
uh, being really cautious to make sure that the ground, exposed ground wire, is nowhere near any of my terminals on the side of the switch, or any of the switches. Okay, all of them look like they're going back in nicely. It's gonna take a second just to make sure they're nice and straight. They're seated straight. And I'm gonna wrestle this big guy in first. I'm gonna put some pressure with my thumb so that not all of the pressure is on the screws because sometimes that's how screw heads can get broken off. Okay, now we're gonna test fit our cover plate, make sure it still fits and looks pretty. If it doesn't quite fit, you can always push your devices over a little if they're still loose enough. This is all happening before I turn the circuit back on. I'm just test fitting it. Looks like that's gonna fit fairly well once I tighten these screws in. Now that I'm sure it's gonna sit on here nicely with the screws, I'm gonna make sure everything is off and I'm gonna go flick that circuit breaker back on. And the reason why I'm doing that before I tighten these screws is because if it doesn't work, I wanna know before I go through the trouble of putting all these in and making them all look pretty. Okay, breaker's back on, let's see if these work. That works, that works, and that works. Awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on. I'm gonna speed this up so it only takes a second and we'll check out the finished product. Okay, these screws aren't in the greatest shape. Had I known that, I would have brought some more with me today, but I am gonna leave them all facing upright. I think that's the prettiest. The one in the bottom right here isn't even a flathead. It's just a cross Phillips, so this is about as nice as we're gonna be able to leave this today. All right, thanks for watching another video with the electrical guide, and I hope you learned how to put up a fan timer switch.